What I love about St. Patrick's Day is it's unique to us, the Irish, but it's celebra celebrated throughout the world. Only yesterday, I think it was, I read about uh, in Norway, they're going to put an Irish flag on the highest mountain in Norway this year for St. Patrick's Day. And as everybody knows, the Great Wall of China is green and all over the world, New Zealand, the whole world, like, you know. So for a little country like us, we're recognised throughout the world on our special day, which is St. Patrick's Day. And that's in itself speaks volumes for our country and us as a people. I love everything about it. Well, I love, used to love most of all the pub afterwards. <laughs> you know, we'd all go down for the Irish coffee. Beautiful. And uh, I'd have a session then that night in Sages with the band. What I love about Patrick's Day is the fun, the colour, the music. To see people on the streets enjoying themselves. On both sides of the streets as the prayer passes by. Hail, rain or snow, we did it, we walked it, and we did, I have to say we did, and uh, they were very special to me. To be part of it was, gosh, it was like for a young lad of 10 or 11 years of age, it was great, you know. Then the next year or two after that, then we had to um, travel on the back of Mahi Ryan's lorry. So Mahi had a coal lorry back in the day, famous coal man in, in the town, and uh, we used to play the Irish music on the back of the coal lorry then, and that was very exciting now back in the day with bad suspensions and bad roads and going around corners and trying to sit on a stool and try and play accordion. And uh, also John Power had our dancing troupe on the back of the lorry, so ah, it, was, it was really enjoyable, you know. From being very young, going downtown and joining in the parade and being part of the parade was always great fun, you know. I've also been to America with the New Ross and District Pipe Band uh, to perform and, and take part in America and also in the St. Patrick's Day Parade in, in London. But my favourite place, of course, is here in New Ross, where we have all the bands, all the clubs, vintage cars, vintage tractors. You know, I love the vintage cars too, looking at them. I was mad about big cars. I always had a big car. I, I drove a, a Zephyr, a Zodiac. The only thing I did, never got a Mercedes. <laughs> well, the favourite part would have been the parades, obviously the brass band was out and the pipe band was out. And everybody had their shamrock in those days, you know, and it was a sort of an honour and a privilege to wear your shamrock. And it showed the fact, as I said already, that we that we are Irish, you know, and it was a great day. And there was a hymn we used to sing when I was going to school. I've never heard it since I've been to school. It was a hymn about St. Patrick, which went, Hail glorious St. Patrick, dear Saint of our Isle, on us thy poor children, bestow a sweet smile. And now thou art high in thy mansion above, on Erden's green valley, look down with your love. And I've never heard it since I went to school. I loved parading. I loved being in it. With the organisations I was with, and with the pipe band, and with the FCA. And uh, to, to watch the families, the kids, they were my best part. The colour, the music, the noise on the streets. I mean, it was very special. No, going up to the, uh, the tree bullet gate there, and watching the, the, that time the grandchildren waving to them. And, and Mary was saying, Look at them there, they don't look at them. Adam, the more, all the grandchildren, they'd be waving on the way down. You said something about uh, having an, um, a suggestion for a float. Well, we already had it. That was one great, great St. Patrick's Day. The jazz band up on the floor playing the whole bit out in the earth sound, really smashing. Everyone enjoyed it. Oh, my own floor would have to be about the three bullet gate where we are now, because it's it been so important uh, in our town, you know. 
and said where we are right now is where Taoiseach have spoken in uh, 1798 commemorations, pikemen, and it's a pretty special place from our history point of view. Well, I, I was often thinking about it, I never got around to it because unfortunately this time of the year it's very busy for me. But I would love to make up a float of the foundry here and, you know, make up a little furnace, like, you know, and you could have coloured water maybe as the metal and, you know, make a little mould on, 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 on a flat bed, you know. And that was something I was always wanting to do, but never, never got around to doing it. What would I put on it? Plenty of colour, plenty of music. Oh, as much as you possibly can. The more colour, the more fun, the more comedy even. It's, it's all part of Paddy's Day. And that's what I did. The crack and the, the, laugh. Crack and the laugh. I, I don't know, it's something I never thought about. Uh, you know, it's not something that comes to your mind straight away. Uh, or I'm sure I would come up with something elaborate, you know, and impressive. <laughs> Yeah, well, in the earlier years, we used to play a bit of music with, with Ted and, and uh, the Pasadena Jazz Band, you know. And uh, yeah, when JJ had the court arms, it was a, it was a lively spot now, because you were down in the town and they were getting the, the crowd from the parade, you know. And um, it was hard to kind of play the jazz kind of stuff because lads were very patriotic of a Pasadena day and they get a few drinks and they wanted to be singing Bull of Vogue and, and, and uh, all that old ballad stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was really enjoyable, yeah. No, it was great though. All the old ladies loved my music. They all around me in the front of me. Poor Mrs. Uh, up in Abbey View, Malone. She called me maestro. <laughs> Getting the uh, slasher powers, we call them Seamus. Inviting us into the house. Or the Irish coffees as well. And my wife getting on to me, they don't drink too much of them now. You're not supposed to be drinking too much of them. Sure, I drink them as long as they kept coming. <laughs> it became a tradition in the, in the house. Like That was, I suppose, the early 80s. And every year then after that then, um, I avoided kind of taking part in the parade because the family used to come and the parade used to pass by the house. So you were there. So then after the first year or two, I decided then that so we'd make a few Irish coffees, give them out to people in the parade. So then for uh, just up to up to the time we finished there, two years ago, unfortunately with the pandemic, uh, I used to get a whole lot of plastic cups and a couple of bottles of Jameson, and we used to make trays of coffees and leave them out to the lads. So, and Ted St. Ledger was one of them. Poor old Ted now for the last uh, couple of years has been confined to a wheelchair. But Ted had always come up and he'd stop and we'd have the Irish coffee and a bit of chat about the parades of the years and all that. So that became a, a good tradition now over the, the last few years. Well, Seamus Power used to look after St. Patrick's Day and we really looked forward to it. And uh, the hot coffees, Irish coffees. That was it. Thank you. Thank you, Seamus. <laughs> but in the beginning we had uh, two pipe bands. The FCA pipe band, of course, and the New Ross and District pipe band came into it, and the Holy Confraternity band, the brass band. And that was colour alone, if I mind the sound of music. But they have all their clubs participating. But like from the Jarlines to the Camogie to the Rowan Clubs, to every club that we had in our town participated. At that time we used to have rigid trucks. It's not really our tips that we have now. Uh, you imagine going around the town with an in a rigid with music playing and you're going over these ca car bumps and the fellas falling all over the place in the back of the trailer. I mean, they were freaking wonderful things. They were, they were top class, you know. And you, you hear the guys afterwards at the parade and they tell you, Victor, don't ever do that to me again. <laughs> but, you know, we all laughed at about it. You know, they had fantastic times. And, it was a day off school, obviously. It was our national holiday, and uh, we got dressed up, and our shamrock, of course. And as I said, a day off from school, and then we were waiting for the afternoon for the parades to come along, and that was a great, a great thing to see the brass band out and the pipe band out, because it always gave me a thrill when I heard the bands. I just loved them, you know. 
Well, my favourite part in the parade, when I wasn't comparing or that, would, would be helping to get a, a really decent float to try and get the best float in the New Ross St. Patrick's Day Parade. That would be, that, that would be the ultimate. I gave most of my life in parades, either participating or organising. I was chairman of it, I've done it many years, but it's an honour to be part of it. You know? And the people of New Ross did not let us down. They participated, they gave us every support we could possibly get. The town council, very, very good. They looked after assurance at the time, they looked after, gave us funding and gave us so much help. The Garda, the Garda presence was just unreal, unreal what they did for us. The civil defence, they, they all participated. And without that, it just couldn't happen, you know. Well, yeah, in the, in the later years, well, it was taken part really was, it was the most enjoyable part of the parade, you know, even though it was enjoyable for the family occasion afterwards. But, um, like, as, as probably everyone knows that I've been involved in pantomime now for more years than I can remember, you know. Um, I think my first pantomime was back in the early 80s. And I, we used to go to pantomime, like, like since I was that height, like, you know, but um, I, I actually dressed up a couple of times in pantomime costumes, you know, and my sister Angela was on the committee the last couple of years as well, and they dressed up and stuff like that. So, so that was, you know, a bit different. I remember we done Golden Ox and the Three Bears one year, and uh, I dressed up as Baby Bear. And everyone was kind of laughing at me, getting the Baby Bear costume, you know, but, um, when the parade started, it was absolutely freezing, which it mostly is of a Patrick's Day. And I was snug as a bug in the rug, in, in, the, in the baby bear costume, lovely furry costume. And uh, ah, the parade went past off, lovely, and everyone else was freezing. A few years ago, I was delighted uh, with my other half, Maureen, to be uh, the Grand Marshal, uh, which was a great privilege uh, to be uh, asked to be Grand Marshal, which was, which was great. And uh, yeah, that, that was a sort of a, a very important day in our, in, our, in our lives, you know. Biggest thing there was, was to get the marshal job. You know, St. Patrick's Day marshal, to get that. That was a wonderful thing to get. Well, my late brother Jimmy, uh, everybody knew Jimmy in town. He was always the leader of the scouts. And everybody remembers him carrying the flag. Hail, rain or snow, wind, heavy gust wind, it didn't matter to Jimmy. That was his joy. He loved it every year, so like he did in the pantomime. You know, he, he just, if he was sick, he'd get out of the bed to come out and do this. He was that into it. And those memories, they were special. Yeah, it's, well, Patrick's Day for the last few years has been kind of different because now I have, um, Two nieces, one is in Los Angeles in, in, in America, and the other, Jane, is in uh, Perth in Western Australia. And I have cousins in, in all over Australia as well. So it's it's a bit different now because thanks to God to Facebook and Messenger or something like that, you can share pictures and share share experiences of Patrick's Day. So I suppose to all my family that's abroad, cousins abroad, like I'd like to wish them all a very happy Patrick's Day. Just to, to get out and me master with it if you can, or if not just get out and support it and give them all a good cheer. As a nation and a people, we're unique throughout the world, and it's a great honour to us as a, as a nation and Irish people, you know. And just shows you how well we are regarded throughout the world and respected, you know. That, uh I think St. Patrick, uh, considering he arrived here in 431, it's amazing how all these years afterwards that uh, he's still able to make an impact worldwide. It's just incredible when you think about parades literally all over the world, everywhere, everywhere. Amazing. <laughs>